In the last video, we showed how to use convolution neural networks in Keras to detect cats and dogs in emails. The, the convolution neural networks were trained from the scratch. And in this video, we're going to show how to uh, use a pre-trained convolution neural network to get a more, more precise uh, resource. OK. So the first step is to load the pre-trained convolution neural network, which is BGG16. It is going to use the weights of ImageNet. This is a neural network that is trained to detect objects in images. It has a complete neural network, but we are going to say that only include the top, which are the convolution neural networks, a convolution layers, but we are going to exclude the dense layers, which is to detect the categories. I think uh, this is trained to detect 1,000 classes uh, using ImageNet. So we only want to detect two classes, cats and dogs. So that's why we're going to explode it. And the input shape is uh, the size of the image, which is 150 by 150, and the colors, the red, green, blue. Uh, but this uh, could be detected uh, automatically by this, so it might not be needed. OK, so here's how the convolution neural network looks. It has a bunch of uh, convolution layers. Uh, some, uh, in, the, in the previous video, we saw how the, the max pooling and convolution layers were alternated. In this, you can see that it uses two straight convolution layers and sometimes even three. And there's a, a five, is, is a bunch more. Uh, also, it's using padding, so between each convolution layer, you don't see the borders get, getting lost. Uh, also, it increases the features from 64 to 128 uh, until it reaches to the end, which is 512 features, and the image is very small because of the max pooling. Uh, I, I, I guess that this takes a lot of time to train, so it is good that we can get it already trained. So the first strategy that we're going to do to use this is to uh, feed the inputs to, to here and get the outputs of the features and then have our own separate neural network with dense layers only and train those with those uh, features that are the outputs of this. So that's the first strategy. It's going to be very fast training and a decent uh, pre precision results. But uh, we're going to so show also how we can plug uh, our own dense layers with these convolutional layers uh, and train everything together. That's going to come after. OK. So the path is the same path in the, that we have with all the cats and dogs features divided by tra uh, training data, validation data, and test data. We have uh, 2,000 train training photos of pictures of cats and dogs. We have 1,000 for validation and 1,000 for testing. Uh, training is to modify the neural network. Validation is to see how, pro, uh, how generalization of the network is progresses as we train to see if we are overfitting or not. And testing is to make the final evaluation. It's good to have them separate so that uh, we can uh, independently, independently verify the precision of the neural network. OK, so we're going to use, again, image data generator to load the data. Uh, this is no data augmentation this time. We're rescaling the, the pixel values from 255 possible values to values between 0 and 1 because it's more, better for the neural network. Uh, the batch size is going to be 20, which is the number of samples uh, per uh, that are processed at the same time in the neural network. So for each 20 samples, uh, the weights of the neural network uh, updated. So these 20 samples are processed at the same time. So if we have uh, 150 by 150 by 3 uh, images, then the tensor, the input tensor for the neural network is going to be 20 by 150, 150 by 3, because everything is fed at the same time and to update the neural uh, weights after that. OK. So first of all, uh, we want to take the output of the pre-trained network. So we're going to get the inputs from these folders, and we're going to get some vectors uh, of feature data. And in order, in order to do that, we're going to have this method. Uh, and this method, exa extract features, is going to extract the feature values. That is the feature value and the labels. The labels are the same. They do, do not really change. But the features is the output of the pre-trained convolutional neural network. 
Okay, so it's going to take the training directory, variation directory, and we apply the same function for all of, all of the tree and the number of samples. Okay, so those are the inputs, the directory, the sample inputs. The output is going to be the number of features, and the number of features, the, the size is going to be 4 by 4 by 512, which is the output of the convolutional pre-trained convolutional layers. Those are the features. And the sample count, which in this case 2000, this one 2000, or 1000, or 1000. Okay, and also the labels is basically a number of samples. So we're going to use the data generator that we created in here. And using the directory, we're going to flow the images from that directory. 150, 150, the batch size is 20, and classification is inferred from the folders. So each of the train validation and tests have subdirectories called cats and dogs. And from those cats and dogs subdirectories in here, the label is inferred. So if you are under cats, the label is going to be cat, and if you are under dog, the label is going to be dog. So the generator is going to give you the images, the image and the label. The label is just passed through. And notice that we are uh, feeding the output uh, 20, 20 at a time. So if you, if you start iteration at zero, there's going to be zero by 20, zero. Zero plus one is one, plus tw uh, multiplied by 20 is 20. So you uh, writing from zero to 20, all the labels at the same time. And the same thing it goes for features. We're feeding 20 at a time. Okay, for features, uh, basically what we're going to do is take the mod convolutional base model and predict the, the output. We pass the input images, and he's going to give us the output, which is a 4x4x512. Four by four by uh, yeah, no, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this got me a little bit confused, but basically it's, uh, the, the input is going to be the image, the image and the output is going to be the, the feature outputs in here. Okay, so after that, uh, we're going to get the training features, and and that is what we're, we're going to use to train our dense layers. Okay, so uh, first, the dense layer, uh, do not expect image or rectangular data they just expect a vector so we have to flatten uh, our data uh, that uh, for training data is 2000 just multiply all the dimensions to get the flattened with a numpy reshape we get the flattened vector and that's going to be the input for our dense layer okay so let's create the, the layer uh, we're going to have a sequential layer uh, the first le dense layer is going to give us the features, 256. Again, a rectified linear unit for regularization. And you expect a flag vector, so we multiply all the dimensions of the feature. We use a dropout with 50% of chance of getting a pixel blanked out or not. And this is for regularization to generalize better in the training. And again, the output is going to be cats and dogs, so it's going to be only one feature. And using sigmoid because it's a binary classification problem. Okay, uh, so let's compile the model. Uh, notice that the convolution layers are not included in the model at all uh, because we're going to train uh, with the with the features. And okay, so let's compile the model again. We are going to use a root mean square propagation. Uh, in the previous video, we used a one to the negative four uh, for the uh, Training ratio, the learning sorry the learning rate for the learning rate, and now we're going to use two to the negative five, which is a smaller learning rate. So it means that we are not going to uh, update the model uh, as quick as as before, uh, because we are dealing with pre-trained model. Okay, uh, so we're going to use binary cross entropy because of the nature of the problem. That's the loss function. Uh, the loss function is basically the the formula to uh, for the that for the training of the algorithm, the RMS is gonna use that loss function. It's gonna minimize, try to minimize that function to train the weights of the neural network. Okay, so uh, precision is gonna, accuracy is gonna be our metric. Okay, so let's uh, train the model. We pass the features rather than rather than the images. We pass the the features. For training with the labels and uh, validation features and validation labels. Batch size is 20, epochs again is 30. And we train it, and this is going to be very fast. And it's going to start relatively high, 
although the the network starts a little bit low because this is kind of training from the scratch. Uh, for some reason, it's a little bit better than the previous uh, example. I mean, previous video which started at about 55 percent is starting a little bit higher in here, even though it's from the scratch. But anyway, it's start to make progress and it arrives to 20 uh, 90 percent. Okay, so now let's use PyPlot, which is basically taking the history object coming from the training. And that history object contains vectors for the data of uh, accuracy, validation, uh, training accuracy, validation accuracy, training loss, and validation loss. And the size of one of those vectors, all of these are the same size. So we take the length of it to get a range from one to the maximum length, and this is going to be the epochs which is the, the horizontal uh, axis and use all of this as the vertical axis and we just plot it and we can see that the dots are the training accuracy and of course uh, the training accuracy is going to try to uh, train all the way to 100% and the validation is it's going to make some progress but then it stalls it still it arrives to 90% which is better than what a uh, doing a convolutional neural network train from the scratch, that, that is much better. Uh, but still, it looks like there's some overfitting because uh, is the, the training is not uh, being generalizing enough. Uh, maybe with some regularization, dropping down this a little bit, and maybe we can bring this a little bit higher. Okay, so now uh, let's do uh, the other approach, which is a uh, mixing the convolutional uh, layers with our own dense layers and train them all together. So that's what we're going to do here. Create a new sequential model, uh, use the convolutional base as it is, so it's going to take a reference of it and add all the convolutional and max pooling uh, layers and then we're going to flatten them with a layer uh, to get the vector we want for the dense layers and then again the dense layers are the same, 256 features, uh, rectified in our unit and one for the output. Okay, so here's how it looks. Uh, so here, uh, instead of getting all the layers, we just get a reference of the pre-trained layers. Again, the output is the same. And yeah, it's basically nothing new. Okay, so now uh, we have a, a few options. We can decide to uh, either train the layers or of this model or not. So at the beginning, it's assumed that we can train everything. So if for this, for the model we just created, we ask how many uh, the train, what are the trainable weights, and take the length out of it. So we get 30, which means that we can train everything, all the layers, including the ones for the pre-trained model. So now let's take the pre-trained model and notice that this is a reference. I mean, this is taking a reference because whatever we modify here is uh, going to affect uh, our model. Okay, so let's say that we don't want to uh, train no layer for from the uh, pre-trained layers of the convolutional uh, layers. So now we ask again the same question, and we say, okay, only four layers are uh, trainable. So I guess that corresponds somehow to the dense layers uh, that we added. Okay, so now let's train it. So the training is going to be only training the, our dense layers without training the convolutional uh, layers. So we're gonna now we're gonna use data augmentation again. We use the image data generator to uh, pull the data, the images from the folder, but also we're gonna apply some affine transforms. And that affine transforms are to uh, to augment the data. That is, for example, if we have two thousand images, then we can have ten thousand image different images because we apply a, a random affine uh, transformations to them. And that include a rotation, so we specify the, the random rotation angle, the maximum, the maximum uh, range of the shift, uh, like the translation, the shearing, the, the range of the shearing, the range of the zoom, if we flip or not the image, and rotate. And when you rotate an image, you might lose some pixels. So how do you feel them? Uh, we choose to use the nearest pixel to feel the lost uh, pixels in rotation. Okay, that's for training and for validation, we're just going to rescale uh, the output values from 0 to 1. Uh, this call here, test data gen, but it's for validation, really. And now we're going to pull the images from the folder, uh, size 150, 150, batch size 20, binary classification, the same, all same parameters. 
and we get 2,000 images with two classes. Now we're going to get the validation generator, the same validation directory, the same parameters. Okay, so let's compile the model. We're going to use a RMS, a root mean square propagation, the same learning rate, a same parameters. And now let's fill the generator with the train generator and the validation generator. Uh, also, same steps, 2,000 divided by 20, 100, 1,000 divided by 20, 50, same parameters. Okay, uh, so, yeah, the accuracy of the training model uh, starts somewhat high again. And let's see how it goes. And now, now that we're training the, this one, it takes, it takes longer, it takes longer. Okay, so it gets all the way to 90% accuracy for validation. So let's copy paste the printout and we can see this. So the validation starts somewhat high and gets a little bit higher. And yeah, so there's still some signs of our fitting because there's a, a gap in here. So, but it's getting, it's getting somewhat higher. But uh, not that much really because it's ninety percent. This is the same that we got from the previous method that it was basically feeding the input image, getting the features, and then train uh, isolated a dense a dense neural network. And I would prefer the previous method because for the same accuracy, if I can train the the more faster, then the other method is much better. And and but yeah, but at the end when you when you deploy the neural network. In the previous method where uh, you train them separately, uh, you, you still at the end have to predict them both of them together. Uh, so in terms of when you deploy the neural network, uh, I guess the speed should be the same because you have to go through the prediction. Uh, the prediction has to go through all the layers, both convolutional and dense, in either method. But for the training, the previous one uh, was faster. So now let's improve the accuracy on this by training. Uh, some of the layers of the pre-trained convolutional neural network. Let's go to that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is gonna say, okay, we're gonna make all these layers after this one to a uh, tunable, trainable. Uh, why this one and not the other ones? Because uh, again, the closer you are to the image, the image, the more generic you are, and the closer you are from the output, the closer for from the classification you are. So basically, we want to train the ones that are not as general and keep the general ones as they are. So we're going to keep the other ones uh, untrainable and change these ones. So here's what, what we're going to do. We're going to set everything to trainable. And then we're going to use this simple algorithm to, to say, OK, with this local variable, we're going to set it to false. And at the beginning, since it, it is false, we're going to train uh, what we're going to set all the trainable layers, uh, all the layers trainable property to force. And then when you detect the convolution, this convolution, then you're going to set that local property true. So all the layers after that are going to be true. Okay. Okay. And now uh, we're going to compile them all. It's the same model. Uh, notice uh, we haven't changed the model. We are dealing with the same model. And we're going to use a learning rate even lower, 1 to the negative 5, because we don't want to change much of the weights. Uh, and same parameter, binary cross entropy, and then we're going to train it. And uh, again, uh, we are using the same train generator, the same validation generator, which are using data augmentation. And yeah, and basically we just train it. And now uh, this is really slow. It takes, it took me about 20 minutes to run this. So it reached all the way to 93%, which is a, an improvement. So we plotted and and we got this, and but this is a little bit shaky. So let's use this function smooth curve to uh, that uses something like a Kalman filter. And with that we get a smoother curve and we can see that uh, hmm, Basically, stay around the same. Hmm. Okay. Okay, but then uh, let's just validate the data. The, I, mean te I mean, test the model, the train model, with uh, the test data. Not the validation data, but the test data. So there's a method for that. So let's get a generator for the test uh, data. And 
yeah, so it's the same parameters for the test generator. We're not using data augmentation, of course. And then we use this evaluate generator. This is a method from the neural network model to that takes the test uh, the test data and the steps are basically we have 100 1000 images divided by the batch size which is 20 so that's 50 okay so we evaluate it and we get the loss and the precision using the test data and we can see that the precision is 94% which is pretty high and uh, and using this same data set uh, this result will arrive in probably the top results in the original Kaggle uh, competition. But notice that we only used 2,000 samples and it was pretty straightforward. Uh, of course, we are using a pre-trained uh, neural network, uh, which is an advantage. Uh, and now, uh, for the next video, we are going to try to visualize uh, how the internal layers of the neural network are. Uh, for neural network, usually it's hard to visualize the intermediate values of the neural network. But uh, since uh, for computer vision image processing problems, we are dealing with images, the intermediate values of the convolutional neural, neural network are surprisingly uh, uh, intuitive. So we're going to show how uh, we can see the intermediate results of the, of the layers in the next video. Thank you.